Good afternoon, everybody. Hope everybody's doing great on July 28th, 2019. I'd like to call this video. This is the FMOC report, the wild card, where Powell keeps the interest rate down by a quarter basis points or 50 basis points. There is a 75% to have a 75% decrease a quarter point in interest rates and about 20 to 25% increase to 50 basis points. So keep an eye on half a point to a quarter point in the Federal Reserve on Wednesday if they decrease the interest rates by a quarter. So let's start by taking a look at the Fortune 500 company on a four hour chart. And there is a reason why I put this up before I go to the weekly and the daily. We have the prior old channel, the wider channels from top and bottom. And I created a minor two channels, which is the green and these two purple ones. We violated the purple, but we created a smaller range in here. And we eventually broke the overnight 3,027.75. We hit target of uh, 30,000, I mean, 3,029.50. And the target was on Friday, 3,031.75. We missed it by a hair, but you can see that the range on Friday, we looked up, we from Friday, you know, from Thursday's gap down and we continued higher, we reached and we cleaned the overnight on Thursday's high. Is this going to be continuation on Wednesday where the wild card pal decreases interest rates by a quarter point to reach a higher target? Let's take a look at the weekly and we'll go from there. This is the weekly chart, which has this range in it. And we have this prior up. I think that 3035 area is very critical once we clear the 50. This is the upper range of those two. It's a wedge. It looks like a cone, you know, you know, upside down. And eventually, if we can clear this area here, I think the upper target is up here, that gray box that I have here on the daily chart. So I think this is the first move up. And if we end up losing, we'll fill the gap to the 55, 20. 29.55 area, 60, and eventually to the 18 SMA on the weekly. Let's go back to the daily and take a look at it a little bit more in detail. And this is the daily chart. We still have these upper channels. You got this one and this one. We have a minor one internally. Let's just zoom in a little bit. I kept my alt fib here because the extension is way up there. This channel, if we eventually break through that 50%, because you got you can see I have a purple one here and a purple one here or a green one and a green one. I think if we clear the prior high in this channel here, it's going to look a little higher to the first target, which is around, you know, the 30, 50, 30, 35, and eventually up to the 30, 66, 30, 85, which we can clear and eventually to the sub target, the 30, 90. If we end up losing, we look to the first target to fill up the gap, the 3,000, which we fall, we can fall through, which will become bearish, then we can get back to the 55 from the 55 back to the 50 SMA on the daily. This is why I'm showing you those two ranges inside this channel. So let's take a look at the, what the Dow Industrial, uh, let's take a look at the SPX just a little bit. And it's in a similar situation. I didn't do any updates on it. We can see that we broke the prior Wednesday high. We had to push down and eventually broke up. And I think the up target is usually, it's going to be up here in the 60s. You can see it. This channel is no longer valid. we got to take that out of the way. Remove drawing. And would you can draw another one up here, but I'm not going to do that. Just leave it because you can see the wider range. And if this channel is broken, usually the target is up there. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ, the NQ. It shows a really nice... Uh, Break out the NASDAQ 100. Here it comes. The NQ, you can see I don't have any channel, but you can see from here it's trying to poke its head above that 8,050. And I think if it clears the 8,050, the up target is going to be that oval here. And if we end up losing and they don't like what the Fed have to do, 
the first we fill that gap that seven thousand nine thousand fifty and eventually nine thousand and fall through back to the backside down here where the gap is at 77.45 area let's call it um, let's take a look at the uh, the Dow Industrial Average YM YM uh, on Friday wasn't as strong because you know you had the Apple you know the tariff issues with you know China and Trump Trump you know tweeted something about Apple that they're not gonna give the Apple computers it's part of their business but usually it's the phone uh, they want to you know tax it so it caused Apple to come in and as part of the component of the Dow this is why it was weak but it's still holding let's consider this this is the channel in the 18 SMA if things do turn out great we'll come back to this up channel eventually to the higher one this is no longer valid I'm gonna take that out which is okay remove drawing we can draw, uh, draw another one later we have this channel here and eventually that channel up here if it breaks you got the upper target here so that's the Dow. Let's take a look at the weak hand, which is the RTY, the small cap Russell 2000. If you notice, this is the first, if I draw a channel from here, connect it to this and connect it to this, watch what we're going to do. We're going to grab a channel. This is a channel. We grab this area here. And you can see it poked its head above the Russell than the prior high. Come on, get there. Okay, that's great. And you can see it's looking above if I think it continues because this is the move up will fill that 1600 eventually the 62 and eventually the 1640 I still have that 78 percent where we fell through you know we had the consolidation couldn't hold we, we did a couple of days went a little bit lower and eventually fell through we had two like two kind of falls I think the up target is up here but let's see if the if they keep interest rates like the Federal Reserve Board promised I think this is like a cup this is the handle it and eventually the breakout you know above the 1620 let's take a look at uh, some of the reports which was Netflix NFLX Oops. NFLX I didn't do gold and so uh, oil yet you can see on the earning report you know Netflix gap down it came back above that 320 330 and I even called the 315 area hey look out we're gonna go up and eventually on uh, Tuesday, uh, Thursday, Friday, Netflix broke above this candle and gave a nice push above the 330. What did it stop on the daily at the 200 SMA and this 38.2 fib? If and I marked that oval here from prior, I said be careful if it falls through. We had two targets: one to the upside, one to the downside. On Netflix, you can see I had the same area here. So eventually, I think the 50% FIB is the first target, then the 18 SMA, which is that channel that we fell through from prior. So this is the major target if there's continuation in the market up. If not, and we get rejection at the 38%, look back to the downside in Netflix. Let's keep going. That was a good trade, you know, to the upside last week in Netflix. Let's take a look at Google. Google did a great report, and it took off. Google. And, you know, it tried to fill part of the gap. And I said, hey, everybody, take a look at the ADX DMI target. And I said, if anything above this area, this is a great target to the upside. What did Google do? Rip through the 1200 area and close part of that Fibonacci. If you, need, you can see that gap fill, we missed it by here. You see that low here? We really missed it. The, the low of it was... 1271.71. Let's go to 12.72, and the high of this one um, was uh, 12.68. Let's go to 12. Yeah, 12.68. So we missed it by here and came back down a little bit. You know, it pushed back in, but it's part of that gap. If it can hold this island and clear this area, I think eventually the target up on Google is the 1300. You know, the 1290, 1300. If it falls back. The back side of the channel or the breakout would be here, and this would be a great area to purchase Google, which is this high here, which is around uh, 11, 1200, 1201. So keep an eye on this. If it holds or it holds in here, we look for the upside. That's Google. Um, let's go back to gold GC. This is the thing I'm worried about gold because everybody thinks you know gold on the weekly chart is still continuation and bearish. I think the 1414 area is very 
critical area in gold because if I, we do lose that, this oval here is not going to hold. Eventually, it would be the backside of the 1360 before continuation higher because this is the prior breakout. You can see it once here, twice here, three, four, five, let's call it six. That's the seventh one that it broke. I would like to see gold come back into this channel to continue higher. Everybody's betting on the weekly chart. This is a flag. It's very bullish. Unless you clear the 1460, gold has to retrace part of this half moon because you got this channel here. You got this channel here. If we do one in the middle, just like this, just to show you, we're just hovering around that area on it. And I think this is very critical, the 14, 14, 14, 10. If it does not hold, look for the backside of the 38% Fib where the move started first, then continue higher. I'm not bearish on gold, but I'm just giving you the scenario what I see. I'd like to see gold in this area before continuation. Let's take a look, a look at oil. Um, that's CL. And oil seems to be in the weekly chart in a you know in a wedge or a cone symmetrical triangle go uh oil tried to push up the first broke out second this week last week oil was down move then it actually hold it remember i i said 5475 was a buy-in in our room we hit 5485 and stayed in that range and popped up we stayed in that region, that's 38.2 Fib or 61.8 is the big one. But if we can stay above that 38.2 target, continue back inside this wedge and clear this cone, you know, it creates this roundness and creates another shoulder here to continue higher on the weekly chart. I think the 60.50 and eventually the 68.69 target, which is this oval here, would be that range. Let me show you on the daily what it did so you guys can see it. We're still in that channel, you know, going back and forth. This is the first one that we drew. It's no longer valid, but I have it as a reference in case we clear the 50 and the 18 SMA. We clear that 59 area, 58.50. I think the up target would be the 59.60, eventually to the back side of that 60 area. If oil cannot hold 54.75, Look to the back side of the consolidation in the 52 to purchase oil. And uh, from here, um, let's take a look at Tesla. One more, one more instrument before I finish up and I'll back up to the ES. TSLA. Tesla on the earning report, you know, fell through. But if you look on the daily chart, it's holding the 50% FIB. It's below the 38.2, but holding the 50 SMA. If this thing can turn and does not lose the 2020, 2015, remember, I marked this area to the low in uh, Tesla. If it comes back to this area, you purchase it. Or if the up target on the earning report was up here, so it missed guidance, it fell down. If it cannot clear 2033, I mean, uh, 233. To come back up and hit the 18 SMA, you know, if there's a breakout of this candle, it's to the upside to fill part of the gap in this down channel. If it falls through the 50, the further is your backside here to purchase because this was the consolidation area before the breakup in Tesla. Let's go back to the ES one more time. Remember, the earning report um are coming out on most of the large cap i did not talk about amazon which is fine the wild card once again is the pal which is the federal reserve board if they're going to increase in i mean decrease interest rates by a quarter basis points the odds are 75 percent but if they're going to increase it by 50 i mean decrease it by 50 basis points the odds about 20 to 25 percent to have half a point decrease but i think pal is going to probably do a quarter base lower to keep the market stable because you still got the tariff you still got on wednesday the the uh, the report from the feds and couple of earning reports on the large cap if you want to do guys a spread 
you can do that on SPY, ES, or the SPX, and I'll show you the SPY, how it looks like. This is the ETFs of the S&P 500, usually in mutual funds or, you know, retirement accounts. You cannot trade futures, but you can trade the SPY, the electronically traded fund. Remember, we had this oval here, and the up target is here. So you can put 12, 10, uh, 310, uh, 312 target, or you can do uh, uh, 294, 295, 293, 92 area as low target. In case we want to get to fill this gap, you'll have a target down here or target up here if the Federal Reserve Board decreased a quarter basis points and we get a reaction we get a push up or we get a push down here. So what I'll do, I'm going to put two boxes for you guys in the same region. You can do a spread. One is here. This is your region. And the other region would be up here in the 310, 312. Or the other region would be the 295 to 292. So, I mean, you can do two bucks range or 95 to 93 so these are the two ranges in the SPY go back to ES and I want you to keep an eye on the volume profile instead of the style what we do we come in here instead of using the monkey bars we instead of the candle we use monkey bars and you can see that coming in going back up coming in and we grinding back up this is a virgin control point this is a POC this is a POC this is a POC that haven't been tested. So you got this area, which is a POC around the 308. You got another one around the, the uh, 3000 area. And you got the second one at 2985 area. So remember, these are virgin controls. On the way down, we can come back and retest them and fill the gap. If we fall through the 2998 or 3000, be careful of this area because we can fill the 55 area in the 69 this low here and fill eventually the gap but if we continue higher you double this range here to the upside from the 23 area all the way up to 55 60 area so you can either do this side or the other side hope everybody enjoyed this uh look forward to seeing you at solstice atr or vulcan capital research